Morning everybody, Claire here from Rainbow Acrylics. I've got such a fun pour coming up now. Um, I watched an amazing video on um, YouTube last night where a YouTube artist did a swipe, then she wrecked it, then she spun it out and the results were just amazing. So I'm, I'm adapting, I'm changing things up a little bit, but I'm going to give that technique a try. So I've got a lovely round canvas to use um, and I've got some lovely colours um, to use which is a trial for a commission that I've got coming up which is um, oranges, browns, coppers, golds, that sort of, sort of colour scheme and I'm going to swipe with purple just to add, just to add some fun to it really, just to uh, mix it up a little bit. So let me show you what my paints are. So this is what I'm going to use. Um, let me go through them with you. So I've got Montmartre Gold um, and then I've got lots of Pebio Studio Acrylics. Um, so I've got the Iridescent Orange, Fluorescent Orange, Copper, the Iridescent Red Blue, all mixed up there. Then I've got the Yellow Ochre by De La Rowney System 3. Then I've got a yellow. Um, I put in some of this yellow to start with the Crawford and Black, but it was really runny and um, I'd run out. So I just added a little bit of this um, cadmium deep yellow hue, um, again by Dela and Rowney. I've made a cream colour. I love making cream with white and gold. So a bit of uh, De La Rowney white um, and then just a little bit of Pebio um, gold in it to make a really nice colour. Um, and then my swipe colour is dark purple. So a real contrast to the rest of these. I wanted a dark colour because these are quite light, all of these. They're not particularly dark, so I think a dark swipe colour would look better. So these have all been mixed with my homemade pouring medium, which is two parts PVA glue and one part water. And then I've mixed them all about um, two parts pouring medium to one part paint. So just to try and show you the consistency, it leaves a trail. Um, let me show you on this one. But it's a little bit runnier, it's a little bit thinner. Let me show you on a non-metallic, that might be easier. Um, it's a little bit runnier than when I do my flip cups. Um, but it's still much, much thicker than Dutch pours. So with my flip cups, that little trace on the top of the paint would last a few seconds. Whereas now it's lasting probably just a second um, and it's gone. Let's show you on this one. That one's very slightly thicker, but can you see it really only lasts for about a second and then it's sunk into the paint. Um, all of these paints, I'm going to be putting um, some spot on treadmill silicon, one drop in each cup, except the purple. There will be no silicon in the swipe colour. Um, great. Oh, and the swipe colour, the purple, um, I've added two parts pouring medium, one part paint. Um, but it's, I think because of the colour, it's just, it's just come out thinner, which is what I wanted. Um, I want the swipe colour to be thinner than the others. Um, great. So I'll get my canvas ready. So as far as putting the paint on the canvas is concerned, there isn't really a plan. There isn't a pattern. Um, I'm just going to enjoy just slopping it onto the canvas. Um, no particular order. I'm just I'm just going to drizzle it all over. All I want is the entire canvas to be covered. Right, so that is the entire canvas covered, with the exception of the sides. So let's get swiping. I've got a little tile here, and I'm going to, I'm just checking that's thin enough. I'm going to add a tiny bit more water to my swipe colour. has to be thinner. So that when you heat up the silicon, when you blow torch it, then the um, silicon will rise to the surface through the swipe colour. So I've got a little tile. I'm just going to pour a little bit of this swipe colour onto the tile. So when I've swiped before, I've put the swipe colour onto the canvas. I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to put it on there. 
Um, and then I'm going to swipe, I'm going to put some colour onto the, onto the um, polythene. I'm just using um, a laminating pouch and I've, cut, I've taken it into two parts, so you've got two pieces of polythene. Um, and I've just cut lots of these, um, different sizes, so some a bit bigger, some a bit smoother if you can see. So the reason I quite like these is because they're nice and bendy. Um, they're going to attach nicely to the paint and I'm going to be able to just, I think I'm going to be able to drag it through nicely. Um, so I'm just going to just get some of the paint on the end. Not too much, but just a little bit of the paint on the end. Um, I'm going to put it roughly in the centre and then um, drag it out. Um, oh, let's start here. So put it down so that it touches all the way along and then just slowly, slowly pull it through the paint like that. And then I'm just going to wipe, get rid of that paint, I'm going to turn it over and then do the same on the other side. Um, I'm going to stagger it a little bit and also overlap, try and overlap it slightly. I am so excited. Um, wow, it, I, I absolutely love this. This is not what I was expecting at all. Um, I was going to wreck it and then spin it. I don't think I'm actually gonna do either of those because I'm just so happy with how it is now. I just, I, I can't think that I'm gonna to add to it at all. Um, certainly not by the wrecking. Um, the spinning, I don't know. I don't want the cells to get any bigger. The spinning would stretch everything out to make them bigger. I don't think that's necessary. Um, I've decided, because I was going to spin it, I, that was going to help cover my edges. What I have decided to do is just let them dry and then I'm going to paint them the deep purple because I think that would just look fab, having the, the deep purple from the top um, matching the, the edges, the deep purple edges. Um, but let me take you in for a close-up. These cells are just perfect. Just 
Wow, I am blown away by this colour scheme. The purple and the orange is incredible. Um, I love the areas where you've got the um, the lines of purple showing through. Um, I just think that the lines in contrast to the round cells just looks gorgeous. Um, I'm absolutely blown away by this. I'm going to do more, another one of these, because I, I just love it. Um, I cannot wait for this to dry. I wonder what this will look like when it's dry. Um, the cells are expanding all the time, so um, it will look a little bit different um, when I come back for the dry, with the dry result um, shot. Um, wow, I'm so excited, so happy. Um, brilliant, I'll be back when it's dry. Painting is now dried. Um, I wanted to talk to you first, tell you about the painting first before I show you it, because unfortunately it's really sad news. Um, this painting excited me so much. I was so, so happy with it. So it makes this even tougher. It just hasn't dried well at all. Um, I think it sagged a little bit in the middle. So unfortunately all the cells have distorted. Um, it's still quite a nice painting um, and I'm still reasonably happy with it, but not compared to how it was um, when it was still wet. I loved it when it was wet. Now it's, well, I'm going to show you now. It is totally, totally different. So let me show you. So here it is. I still like it. It's still um, bright and fun and a bit crazy, um, but it's not as it was. Um, so let me go in for a bit of a close up. So the first thing that you'll probably notice is that this purple band through the middle has really, really shrunk. So there is still the darkness there, but it's you can see that all of these cells have sort of spread, come down and spread up. So it's really squashed out that middle band. Um, this band is purple, but as I've as I found before, it dries so so dark, um, it almost looks black. So I think if I did a purple swipe again, I would deliberately add a little bit of white to the purple band, the purple, so that the band in the middle, it, so it's a lighter purple, so it looks more like when it was wet. Um, because that purple there, can you see that? That was the purple I was I was hoping for, but it's dried so dark. Um, what I really notice um, is a lot of the fluorescent orange. You can't see it very well actually on the camera, but it's, there's loads and loads of fluorescent orange, which is really cool. I really like it, so it's really nice and bright. Um, and you can see around the edges, you've got some quite nice cells still. So that's why I think the edges are okay. That's why I think it's probably sagged a bit in the middle. So all the, I think all the paint has just kind of run inwards a bit as it's been drying. Um, I could be wrong. There, there might be another reason, but um, not sure. Um, I definitely noticed as it was drying, the cells were getting bigger and bigger. So unless I just had too much paint and I heated it up too much with the blowtorch, not really sure. Um, but it's done now. So um, the edges, I deliberately left off the edges of this painting. I didn't really do much to them. So what I have done now is painted them in the purple. Um, and I think that looks quite good um, with a nice dark band around the edge of the canvas. Um, so there it is. Let me know what you think. Please leave me comments. Please give me some other ideas of what might have happened, why it looks so, so different. Um, and tell me what you think of it now. I won't be offended if you don't like it, but yeah, let, let me know what you think. Leave any, any comments, any, um, uh, anything you'd like to, to say or any, any help you could give me to know why this happened. Um, great. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please subscribe to my channel. I promise you this doesn't happen to all my paintings. This is the first complete change I've had from wet to dry. Um, so hit the notification bell and then you'll be notified of all my future videos. Great. Have a nice evening, everyone. Bye.